everyone and welcome to today's French language lift presentation on forming questions. My name is Zoe and I'm one of the school's college liaison assistants here at the University of Chester um, and today I am joined by Letitia Cunliffe who will be running today's language lift presentation. Would you like to say hello? Hello everybody. Perfect. You will see us shortly and she'll um, introduce herself a little bit more then as well. But I also have my colleague Max here today who will be moderating any questions as they come through. Would you like to say hello, Max? Hello, everybody. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we will start the presentation shortly, but just to give you a quick explanation on how today is going to work. So you will be given the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation and also answer questions that are asked in the presentation. To do this, we just need you to use the chat that's on the right hand side of your screen. And yeah, exactly. Just as Mags has popped in. Thank you very much. You can see there where we'd like you to pop in your questions and your answers uh, and then we can go through what you've said and share them with Letitia as she's presenting as well. You can do this anonymously if you'd like to, you just need to tick that you would wish to be anonymous and that's absolutely fine, your video or your um, audio won't be shared, it'll just be the chat that comes through. You can also like other people's questions as well and that's just to show that you're interested in what somebody else has said so we can get to that question before we go to anything else. OK, and these questions will be collated at the end by Mags and then they, uh, she will ask Letitia these at the end of the session. OK, I think that's everything from me. But if you have got any more questions, pop them in the chat and we can answer them for you. I think we're just about ready to start. Is that all OK? Over to you. Thank you. So um, I'm Letitia. I'm a visiting lecturer at the University of Chester. And uh, I'm also a translator uh, in medical French because I've written a textbook in medical French. So uh, that was a quick introduction. Uh, let's start with uh, the, the presentation on forming questions. So in French, you have two types of questions. You can ask a question in several different ways. There are closed questions, we say question fermé, and open questions, question ouverte. The answer to a closed question is simply yes or no, in French, oui, non. And the answer to an open question is more developed, and that type of question is formed with an interrogative pronoun. And for each type of question, there are at least three structures. So, what do you remember? How many types of questions are there in French? So, I'll give you the first answer. We have question fermé, closed, and question ouverte, open. How many structures each question has? Max and Zoe, I, uh, are there any answers in the chat? Because I can't see the chat in yes, uh, the chat. We, we will let you know if anything okay. comes through. There are a few um, coming through shortly, I think, actually. It might just be being a little bit shy because we've only just started. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's just put two. No, it's not two, it's three. Okay, at least three questions for each uh, type of questions. So we have two types of questions, fermé, ouvert, and at least three structures for each type of questions. What is the main difference between an open and a closed question? Ooh. Yeah. Um, we've just got a delayed response to the question two, so someone has actually put three. So okay, Good. we're just catching up a little bit on that one. Um, yeah. So for this one, it was a little bit more challenging. This question wasn't it? What is the main difference between an open and closed question? Because yes. it was an inter interrogative pronoun. You said yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if your question is open, 
it needs a more developed answer and you have an interrogative pronoun, whereas if it's closed, it's closed. So the answer is only yes or no. Somebody has literally just put a closed question is yes or no. <laughs> OK, perfect. Right. So let's have a look at question fermé, which are closed questions, meaning the answer is only yes or no. So you simply raise your voice. So we're going to have a look at the different structures. I've said that there are at least three structures per type of questions. So here we are covering question fermé, which is one type of question. And we're going to see the different structures for each uh, for, for that type of, of question. So fermé is closed. Answer is yes or no. And the first type, uh, the, the first uh, structure is when you raise your voice in a questioning way. The register of that type of question, question is informal, which means that you normally use it when you talk to friends, family, colleagues at work. Example, so, tu as faim? Are you hungry? Donc, that type of uh, question, I've only raised the voice, so normally, Tu as faim is a statement. Tu as faim, I already know that you are hungry. But if I raise the tone, if I raise the voice, it can become a question. Tu as faim? It is a question. Elle est fatiguée? Meaning, is she tired? Again, if I know that she is tired, I will only say, elle est fatiguée. But if I want to transform it, this into a question, I raise the voice. Elle est fatiguée? OK, so by only raising the voice, I can actually structure a question. The second type of structure is with esque. Esque is placed at the beginning of the sentence. And the register is standard, meaning that you can use it in any type of situation, whether it's uh, in a conversation or oral conversation or in writing, whether it's formal, informal. This, this is a very useful structure because you don't have to wonder whether it's informal or too informal. It's standard. Est-ce que tu as faim? Are you hungry? Est-ce qu'elle est fatiguée? Is she tired? So you see, I've just used the same uh, the same question as in the previous uh, structure, and I've only placed esque front. The third type of question is when you invert the verb and the subject. So you're going to invert like this, and it is becoming a question. And that type of question is formal. You mainly use them in writing. OK, so these are the three structures for question fermé. So question fermé, I repeat, is only for yes, no answers. And we don't have an interrogative pronoun. The answer is yes or no. We have three structures. Uh, you raise your voice, you put S curve front or you invert the verb and the subject. So an example, sorry, I forgot. So when you invert, as-tu faim? Are you hungry? So you see, if you look at the first uh, structure, all I've done is invert the verb and the subject. Now, let's have a look at question ouverte, which are open, which means that there is an interrogative pronoun and that your answer cannot be yes or no, it cannot only be yes or no. It needs to be a bit more developed. So, you can also invert the verb and the subject, and in this case, the register is formal, meaning mainly in writing. Quand pars-tu en vacances? So you see, I have the interrogative pronoun quand pars-tu, I invert the verb and, and the subject, and the rest of the sentence. So when do you go on holidays? À quelle heure arrives-tu le matin? So, à quelle heure is my interrogative pronoun, and then I have inverted the verb and the subject. Arrives-tu le matin? Donc, what time do you arrive in the morning? The second type of question is also with esque. So, you see, as with uh, question fermée, we have 
in inversion, so inverted, uh, you invert the verb and the subject, and you also have ESC. So you can use ESC, and again, the register is standard, so you can use it in any type of situation. Quand est-ce que tu pars en vacances? You place the interrogative pronoun first, quand, then ESC, and the rest of your sentence. When do you go on holiday? So the meaning doesn't change. Right? It's just the structure which is different. À quelle heure est-ce que tu arrives le matin? So the same as in the previous uh, structure. The only difference is that I have ESC between the interrogative pronoun and the rest of the sentence. Uh, donc, what time do you arrive in the morning? And the third one is when you put the interrogative pronoun at the end of the sentence. And in this case, the register is informal. With question fermé, so the previous type of question, we've seen that we also have uh, an informal structure where you raise your voice. In this case, with question ouverte, we have an interrogative pronoun, so we're going to place the interrogative pronoun at the end, and that's when it becomes informal. Donc, tu pars en vacances quand? And you see the meaning is still the same when you go on holidays. Tu arrives à quelle heure le matin? What time do you arrive in the morning? So again, formal, when um, you you use this in writing mainly, you invert the verb and the subject. With question ouverte, the only thing you need to remember, you have an interrogative pronoun, so you place it first. You have ESC questions as well. Uh, the only difference with question fermé is that you have an interrogative pronoun and the, the register with ESC is the same, it's still standard, so you use it in any type of situation. And the, when the interrogative pronoun is at the end of the question, then the structure is not a proper structure so of, of the question. So the register is informal. You use it mainly with friends, family or colleagues. Hello. What do you remember this time? Structure is informal. Just wait a second. I don't want to watch too soon. Last time, I ruined it. <laughs> we'll just wait a moment. Okay. I, I think you might have to help us a little bit along with that one. We've got no okay. responses at the moment. Okay. So the answer is when you raise your voice. Okay. Uh, it's informal, question ouverte, and when the interrogative pronoun is at the end of the question in the case of question fermé. So question ouverte, you raise your voice, it's informal, and interrogative pronoun at the end of the question in the case of uh, question, uh, I made a mistake, sorry, is the opposite. When you raise your voice, the question is fermé, and interrogative pronoun at the end, the question is ouverte, sorry, I'll modify this later on. Um, what is the register of a question with ESC? Oh, let's have a little look. And the question where it is at the end. Hmm. Somebody's put, and when the question word is at the end, I think no, that was the, the last one. Is that the was register, it? The register meaning is it informal, is it standard, or is it formal? So when I have a question with ESCO, what type of register is this? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I think you might have to help us a little bit with this one as well. Okay. So said standard, sorry. Yes, yeah, standard. Okay, so you use this in any type of situation. And as I've explained, you have ESC questions, both with question fermé and question ouverte. Que fais-tu le matin? Is this question open or closed?
So is this a closed question? No. <laughs> you have closed question is only the answer is only yes, no. Uh -huh. But you have any you have an interrogative pronoun, so your question cannot be yes, no. It needs to be uh, more developed, so it is open. It is indeed. Uh, yeah, and someone's put that in, so thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. So open, there is an interrogative pronoun, and the answer cannot simply be yes or no. What type of structure is mainly used in writing? So we've not got any responses yet, but as every time we no. seem to say this, a response appears. So okay. let's just see what happens. Could you give us any clues for this one, just in case? Yes. So um, we've seen that there were three structures. Um, yes. One is mainly is standard, one is formal, informal. So which one are you going to use when it's mainly in writing? Oh, someone has been really quite honest here and they've said, I can't remember. Okay. So, so no would it answers? Be, no, would it be more formal? Yes. So yeah. it's the formal structure when you invert the verb and the subject. Right. So um, let's have a look at the interrogative pronouns. So, qui, who, example, qui est who is this? Que, what, que manges-tu le matin? What do you eat in the morning? Quand, when, quand pars-tu en vacances? When are you going on holidays? Où, where, où habites-tu? Where do you live? Comment, how, comment t'appelles-tu? What is your name? Pourquoi, why, pourquoi aimes-tu les chiens? Why do you like dogs? Combien, how much, how many, combien ça coûte, how much does it cost? Okay, donc qui, que, quand, où, comment, pourquoi, combien. Oh, I forgot one, sorry, quel. Donc, quel livre préfères-tu, which is which, donc which book do you prefer? Um. Alors, a few notes, a few things you need to remember when you form questions in French. So, quoi is the same as que. So, que meaning what, d'accord? It is the same. If you see quoi, it is the same as que, but it is always placed at the end of a question. Que can never be placed at the end of a question. So, example, que fais-tu? Tu fais quoi? The meaning is the same. What are you doing? But que, can only be placed at the beginning of a question, whereas quoi only comes at the end. Okay, so you can't say quoi fais-tu, for instance, as you can't say tu fais que. So que comes first and quoi is always at the, at the end of a question. Quel, quel is like an adjective. So it needs to agree in gender, meaning féminin or masculin, and number, meaning singulier or plural with the noun that follows. Example, quelle est ta nationalité? Nationalité is féminin and it's singular. So, quel is also féminin singulier. Quel pays as-tu visité? So, which countries have you visited? Quel pays? Pays here is plural and it's masculine. So, quel is also masculin pluriel. So, you remember that quel is like an adjective, it needs to agree in gender and number with the noun that follows. It cannot be placed at the end of a sentence. Example, tu ne viens pas au cinéma, pourquoi? This doesn't work, it's incorrect. You say, pourquoi ne viens-tu pas au cinéma? Or, pourquoi est-ce que tu ne viens pas au cinéma? So you have two possibilities with pourquoi. Either you have the inverted, uh, question, so where you invert the, the verb and the subject, 
or you have the ask a question, but you can't have the question where you, you place your interrogative pronoun at the end. If a verb ends in a vowel and the subject starts with a vowel, you need to add T when you change the order around, otherwise it is impossible to pronounce. Example, a-t-il faim? Is he hungry? So you see a is a verb, il is a subject. They both have a vowel. So when I invert the verb and the subject, I need to put a T in between. Right. Uh, I've given you another example. Joue-t-elle au tennis? Does she play tennis? You see that joue, the verb, ends in E, and L starts with E. I have two vowels, so when I invert, I need to write T in between those two uh, words. So, let's have a look at what you remember. So, which pronoun means which? Okay. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Oui, très bien. Perfect. Two. What do you need to do with the interrogative pronoun quel? So do you need to agree this with the noun, is that correct? Yes, perfect. You need to agree with the noun in gender and number, okay? Uh, the noun that follows. Is this sentence correct? Quoi manges-tu? Could you repeat that question, please? Yes. Quoi manges-tu? Is this correct? Ah. So somebody has said no because you have to put the qua at the end of the sentence, is that correct? Yes, perfect. Yes, qua only comes at the end. I thought can only be placed at the end of a question. Que manges tu is always placed at the beginning. Okay. So it can't quoi manges tu it doesn't work here. You have to say que manges tu or tu manges quoi, d'accord? Uh, meaning, what are you eating? What is the meaning of combien? Oh. If it's okay, can I answer this one? Because I do remember this from my school days. Yes. <laughs> is, that, is that how much? Yes. The good thing oh. is, is it means how much, how many. Okay, so how we many? only have one word for once in French. We only have one word. Yeah. Donc, meaning how much, how many? Is this sentence correct? Tu es fatigué, pourquoi? Ah. Ooh. Just waiting for the response on that yes. one. Um, but I was listening intently onto your last slide when you talked about pourquoi, and it's it's not correct because you've said that you, you don't put it at the end. Exactly. You don't put pourquoi at the end. That's the interrogative pronoun where it's not working if you put it at the end. It's either the beginning, uh, donc pourquoi es-tu fatigué, okay, or pourquoi est-ce que tu es fatigué, but you can't, like, all the other uh, interrogative pronoun, you can't place this one at the end of the question. D'accord? Yeah. A, uh, a student has also said that as well, so that okay. is correct. Very good. Can I, can I ask a question about that yes. then? So, um, as you were talking, I was kind of thinking, if you can't use pourquoi at the end of a sentence, is that only when you're using it in written format? So, if you were having a conversation with somebody, would you use it then? Would it be different? Yeah, but you would need to pose when you're speaking so that the person understands why you are putting pourquoi at the end. Because there's a different, there's another meaning of pourquoi. So if you say, tu es fatigué, pourquoi? So you need to pose. Okay, yes. so I understand. Because otherwise it means for what, which, uh -huh. which, which is in two words. 
So if, if it comes together in your question and you don't pause and you say, tu es fatigué pourquoi? It means you are tired for what? It doesn't yeah. make sense. Whereas if you, you, you pause and you say, tu es fatigué, pourquoi? Then we understand that you are actually asking why you are tired. That's very interesting. Thank you for that. Okay. What are the three possible structures for this closed question? Is he going to the restaurant tonight? So you would have to structure them in French, obviously. Ooh. Okay. Let's see if anyone's prepared to have a little go at this one. Would you be able to help us with the perhaps informal version of this to see if anyone can yes. go and Alors, informal. Donc, is he going to the restaurant tonight? Il va au restaurant ce soir? Il va au restaurant ce soir? So remember that I'm only raising the, to the tone, okay, the voice, and it, it is becoming a question. Okay. So I think you may need to help us with the standard. Yes. Est-ce qu'il va au restaurant ce soir? So now you have given you the informal, the standard, you need to find the formal. Formal, mm -hmm. you need to invert. We are in a closed question. There are no interrogative pronouns. Donc, il va au restaurant ce soir? Est-ce qu'il va au restaurant ce soir? So what is the formal structure? Right. So is it va-t-il au restaurant ce soir? Yes, perfect. Donc, il va au restaurant ce soir informal. Est-ce qu'il va au restaurant ce soir standard? Et va-t-il au restaurant ce soir formal? Let's do one uh, with open question. What has she eaten? So one of the three possible structures for this. I'll give you one. Okay, donc, what has she eaten? Qu'est-ce qu'elle a mangé? So I've done the standard there. D'accord? Qu'est-ce qu'elle a mangé? Qu'est-ce qu'elle a mangé? Oh, let's see. I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> just to see, <laughs> just to see what you remember, really. <laughs> yeah. So is it elle a mangé quoi? Oui, elle a mangé quoi? So this is informal because the interrogative pronoun is at the end. I gave you the standard, so what's the formal one? Qu'est-ce qu'elle a mangé? Elle a mangé quoi? You need to invert to make it formal. Yeah. Does anybody want to have a guess at this or shall I have a guess at this one? So is it qu'a-t-elle mangé? Yes, qu'a-t-elle mangé? Okay, donc elle a mangé quoi? Remember quoi only comes at the end, it's informal. Qu'est-ce qu'elle a mangé? Standard. Et puis qu'a-t-elle mangé? Which is actually que, but because I have the verb avoir, which is two vowels, I put the apostrophe. Donc qu'a-t-elle mangé? And you don't forget that you have two vowels, so you put a T in between. So that was the tricky one, this one. Okay, so that's all for my presentation. Are there any questions? Um, yeah, would it be possible to let us know what does es esca mean? Mm. So esca doesn't have any meaning. Okay, it's uh -huh. only there. It's only there to show that you are asking a question. So esca doesn't translate into anything. Students, learners tend to mistake, uh, make, they, they, they confuse esque with qu'est-ce que. Qu que actually has an interrogative pronoun. Par exemple, 
qu'est-ce que tu fais, what are you doing, but est-ce que in itself doesn't have an interrogative pronoun, okay, it's, it's est-ce que doesn't mean anything. Qu'est-ce que, we have the interrogative pronoun, qu'est-ce que tu fais, what are you doing, but est-ce que tu es fatigué, est-ce que doesn't mean anything, are you tired, that's all. So it's only there to show that there is a question. Uh -huh. That's very interesting. Thank you for that. I've learned a lot today so far too. So what is the difference between quel and lequel? Alors, quel means which and lequel is going to be which one. Okay, so quel livre préfères-tu? Which book do you prefer? Lequel préfères-tu? Which one do you prefer? Thank you for that. And just one last question. What mm -hmm. does the letter T stand for in a question when you invert the verb and the subject? Okay, it's the same thing. So here in my last example, qu'a-t-elle mangé? Um, you see, we have two vowels. It doesn't mean anything either. We call it T de liaison. It's a T which, are, which is there to link your two vowels. So we call it de liaison. It's only there to link vowels. No meaning either. But you mustn't forget to write it. There is also um, another question. So if you use the informal version in a formal situation, is that too rude? It's not too, it's not too rude, but we wouldn't really expect that kind of structure in a formal situation. Oh. Okay, so that's the end of today's session. I would like to thank you um, on behalf of any attendees today for a really informative and interesting introduction into um, the French language and what we've covered today. So thank you so much for um, what you've delivered today. It's been really interesting. I find it personally very interesting and I think um, any of the attendees have too. So thank you very much. That's it for today's session, everybody. If you'd like to join one of, one of our other language sessions, we have another one starting shortly and we have other ones over the next few weeks. So thank you very much. And it's goodbye from us for today. So thank, thank you. you bye.